Thrand here, and I'm here with a follow-up video on my original video, the uh, Pelum, uh, to bend or not to bend. And we determined that the whole idea behind the Pelum was not to bend. One of the things I used to back up my argument uh, was a specific text that stated that uh, Gaius uh, Marius, uh, during the uh, Battle of uh, uh, Versailles, uh, Versailles, however you want to pronounce it, uh, made a special augmentation or alteration to the light peel. Uh, what he had done is he used a wooden pin and only used one metal rivet uh, to secure the uh, shank into the actual wooden handle. So what ended up happening with, with this is most people are curious why he did such a thing. Uh, one of the accounts states that the uh, tribe of uh, Simbri, which was a kelto germanic tribe, uh, in Versailles, uh, actually had no ranged weapons. That's one theory. The other theory is they didn't have very good weapons. And the Romans did not want them getting a hold of the pila, uh, uh, that are many pila that are being thrown, uh, and throwing them back or using them as, as spears. Because we know that the actual pila, uh, from historical accounts, wasn't meant to bend and was meant to be very secure. They used three rivets normally on the light pila. Three and it inserted into the wood, and a lot of times it had a large handle, or uh, uh, this is not quite big enough, to be honest, for most of them, uh, to protect the hand if you were using it as a spear, help protect the actual hand, the shape of it. Also believe that it would have been one of these pyramidical shaped heads for penetration that they were talking about, because they said barb. Unless he used some specific barbing, much like a uh, angon, uh, this is probably what it was like. And the description talks about them being about four feet. This is about four feet. This one's a little bit short. But this is the leaf shape head. I don't think he'd be using a leaf shape head if he was saying something barred. And I think the idea was he absolutely did not want them to use them back on his own legion or his own men. Uh, so what I've done is I constructed one here today where uh, when it hits, we've got our wooden pin that can be broken. Uh, and I had a person online, Kisk79, who's been arguing with me. I told him that these probably would never be recovered because they were from only one battle. These were made specifically for one battle, and chances are all they would have ever recovered is the uh, shank anyway, with the two holes, which we do find these from that period. And uh, most of them, like I said, were dually reinforced. I mean, they went out of their way to make sure that they didn't separate. This would bend first or break before it separated from the handle the way they secured it. But in this situation, uh, I've got the rivet free floating. So this pin in the front uh, will act very much like a guillotine or a little cigar chopper and it can chop the wood because it will kick back, it will hit back in here and uh, distribute all the force from the handle into the shaft and hopefully drive it clean through our shield. Our setup today is the same shield we had before with the uh, six layers of tightly woven fine linen on the front and back laminated with the milk blue over a quarter inch wood, very much like a Roman shield. We've got our 20% ballistics uh, gel right here, which is very, very tough, tougher than human flesh. And that's on our uh, Valkyria or our Scalamare, which is a Valkyria or our shield maiden. Uh, somebody online, I, I liked what he said, he wanted to call her Ballistic Bell. Uh, kind of a good name, I guess, but uh, we try to romanticize it a little bit more than that. What we're going to do today is we're going to put one, uh, well, actually not one, but two layers of the coarse woven linen, uh, tightly woven linen. Instead of eight, like we did in the other video, which is much more Gambeson-like, it will make it a little easier, but I think that's much more representative, uh, representative of early Celts and what they might have if they're not wearing armor than actual Gambesons. Who knows, they might have had lots of layers of cloth, but I doubt they would have that many, especially in the region. The unique things about Marius' modified uh, uh, peel is that I don't think anybody's ever tested it before. So I'm hoping today that this works out, and I'm going to go ahead and try it out and see what happens. Definitely penetrated my shed. Yeah, deep, deeply, deeply. Ooh. I hit the hand. So obviously it broke and it worked, but I hit too near the handle, so we just didn't get the penetration. Let's try again.
And obviously it did what it was supposed to do. It actually broke. It wasn't able to penetrate, but it's now useless. And that's the other reason. What? Yeah. If they tried to get it out of the shield, it'd break otherwise. Very true. If it didn't break on impact and go through fully, oh, yeah. it'd it's break when break it comes no out. What. Huh? It's going to break no matter what. Yes, but whether it's when it goes in or it's out is the question. To fight with it as a spear, it breaks as well. The thing is. They were using it against a group that didn't have ranged weapons, supposedly, or something like that, or didn't have good weapons. If their weapons were better, wouldn't they potentially grab the weapons that were thrown at them? If the weapons broke upon impact, or when they were trying to retrieve them, it'd do the same effect. Correct. They would be unusable weapons. Oh, I hit the toughest part of the shield. This part is way thicker than what it normally would have been actually used. So we did impale the shield and get it out the back side, but there's no way it's going to make it to your actual opponent. I meant to hit in this area where it's not as strong. This was an experimental shield. This is double layers of rawhide. So it coming out the back at all with the actual linen under it is amazing. So, and it broke our pen. So our theory works. It's useless at this point for us to fight with it. Let's see if we can get it out. Ooh. May have broken, but it tilted. Yeah, our pan is broken. It's totally a pale her. It's getting hung up in her claw. It is cracked, it just didn't necessarily fall completely out. Ooh! And her head fell clean off. And we have a broken pin. I think that was pretty good. I walked up and the pin was cracked and fell out as I tried to touch it. I can't see it. Not mad. And it's into her. All the way into her. I clean through the shield. Okay. Maybe the Get last we see of her because she is actually breaking her, in the midsection. Her back is finally starting to give out Plus, for yeah, all the damage. We got in, and this is in gel too. So. I'm, also, I'm currently researching a getting a body. boy next time. Uh, yeah. Uh, it doesn't want to come out, just like they said, barbed. I think this acts very much like a barb. It's hanging up in our cloth. Uh, it went. Oh, it wasn't too hard to get out because it split the back open. And our pin broke just like it's supposed to from the action. So all in all, I think that worked well. Let's see what part we hit. All right. actually went into the actual gel and, and through the mannequin. That's through our actual gel. And the mannequin. And the mannequin itself. Okay. So I'm highly impressed. Well, I hope you enjoyed our episode on Marius's pilum, the uh, breakaway pilum. Uh, please come back and join us. Uh, subscribe. Uh, oh, yeah. Good, like us on Facebook at Thran's Well of Remembrance. Uh, you can join uh, Thane Thran's YouTube boat crew on Facebook. Uh, help us on Patreon you if you can. They are? And as always, are those blue follow Bell. Yes. Yeah. Yep.